Hey everybody, welcome to uh, 2023. Today I wanted to go over some uh, some fuel tuning stuff with uh, with spool up. So a lot of people uh, ask, you know, how do you get the car to run better and spool up, and it's a new combo and whatnot. So if you come to my classes, I teach you some of this stuff. Um, but uh, but I figured I would kind of go over it and show you how to uh, how to look for problems when you're you know coming up to the chip and um, how to get it to spool a little bit faster, which in turn will teach you how to get the car to run better the whole way down the racetrack. So uh, let's open up uh, Holly EF5 E6 build 220. Right here it is. I'm in the fuel ICF, All right? So if you don't know where that is, that's right here. Click on the little fuel injector. So um, so what I got going on here is um, this is uh, with my own personal car. It's a 540 inch uh, big block Chevrolet with a single 118 millimeter. And um, I had recently just switched this car over to a set of new style 600 pound per hour injectors from AFIS. So I wanted to gather a little bit of data. We took the 800s out of the car and I'm putting 600s on them and I'm running it at a higher pressure. So I kind of wanted to learn how these injectors respond with pressure. I was talking to Eric at, uh, at AFIS and um, I feel as if this was a worthwhile investment of my time and I figured I would share the results with y'all um, which are good I just uh, I just didn't you know there was really no need to do what I'm doing but um, it's a good way to teach y'all how to uh, how to tune your stuff so um, we're in volumetric efficiency uh, if you don't tune in VE and you tune in pounds per hour you'd be looking at something like this but today I'm going to show you how we do it in VE so um, so anyway I I, uh, I teach how to build this table from scratch in my classes. Um, so we're not going to get into that, but I'm going to get in, I'm going to show you how to modify your VE table in its response uh, when you've put it up on the trans brake or, you know, as you're going to the trans brake and then how it responds and how it helps. So what I have here is um, I, I had no CO2 on this thing, right? So we're in the boost ICF. I know it says a target of five PSI, but um, I didn't have any CO2 turned on. Uh, there was no need for, for this type of testing. So the rev limiter is set a little low. Um, if we go to ignition parameters, you see the rev limiter is set at a 3900. So it gets there really fast. But um, And that's not really the focus of this. The focus of this is showing you how fueling can make a big change. A lot of people get hung up on um, their car. It's slow to spool. So uh, I, I get a lot of these uh, sent in my email. I get a lot of data logs sent in my email, and I see this stuff all the time. Right, so it's a kind of a hiccup and a cough, and as it's accelerating, this red line here is RPM going to the chip. Okay, so uh, a lot of people strictly only focus on on timing, right? So timing's great; that's how you manipulate things to build, get it to build boost faster. Um, but getting the 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 engine to the uh, to the limiter is the uh, the first thing you got to accomplish, right? So if you don't get it to the limiter, you can't start pulling timing out of it to uh, to get it to spool. So I've made other videos on timing manipulation and how to get it to spool and whatnot. But um, but I think a lot of people miss this first part, right? So um, so this is the first. I literally made this fuel map, right? I made this fuel map from scratch, and then this is the first stab at going on the chip. Okay. So I'm going to zoom in a little bit. If you don't know how to do that, it's left click, hold it down, highlight this whole area, and then let go. Um, but if you look, this is this is pretty choppy. This is pretty ugly. Uh, you notice that the RPM, you know, as you're going to the floor, RPM comes up here around 3100, and then it falls down, right? And it just falls off, right? So um, if you look here, uh, these two things right here, so base fuel VE, so this is what I had in there, right, 81.9%, and uh, estimated VE, 76%, right? So I'm going to split screen this to make life a little bit easier. So there and there, okay. So um, if we notice, estimated VE is, uh, is 76%, but is it really estimated VE of 76%? Well, it's just right when we started getting into it right after we get out of acceleration enrichment, right? So I kind of disregard this area right here. Um, because look, if you say it, it estimated VE is 118%, 
Um, and that's because the air fuel is so far off of its target and it wants to add a whole ton of fuel in order to get there. But the reality of it is, is that I just whacked the throttle, right? So you see how we're coming up in throttle. So let's wait until we get out here where it's got a little bit of RPM. So take a look here, right? So, or I'm sorry, after it's got a little bit of time with 100% uh, TPS. So if we take a look here, our base fuel is 82.28%, uh, which means at the time uh, of this first log, I had roughly 82% VE in this table, right? So I always like to start them off rich. Um, I teach this in my classes. So and I, so we're safer to be rich than we are lean. I don't want this thing backfire and trying to go to the chip. So, um, so I start off rich, right? Now, I see this. I see how it's choppy here, right? Base fuel, again, 83%. I've got an estimated VE of 61. Is 61% dead not accurate? Probably not. Um, 60%, 62, 65, 66 is starting to climb. So notice that this is the end result. This is this table here is the end result after tinkering with this a handful of times to get this right. But the base fuel VE right here is what I, we started with. So let's look at a comparison, right? So the second the second uh, um, rip that I had on this thing, right? So this was the first one. If we look uh, test one, right? So let's go compare data log. And let's go to data logs, and there's test two, right? So let's open that up. All right, so I'm going to full screen this again real quick. So look at that. Immediately we see a big difference here, right? So let's close this off, this off, and that off. There we go. So right away there's a big difference in RPM trace, right? So what I did was I started to clean it up, right? So... Uh, base fuel VE was 83% right here. Now it's 77%, right? So I started to trim this out. I don't make a huge wild swing all in one shot because a a big wild swing in one shot will get you on the other side of perfect. Um, and then you won't realize that you'll keep wind up going that direction. So um, we're slowly working our way towards uh, reaching our target. You know what I mean? So, uh, so if you notice, I, I started trimming some fuel out of it, right? I'm at from 83% was what I started off with originally, down to 76%. But notice the fuel flow volume difference, right? Um, it's not too, too much different, right? It's pretty close, but we're still, but notice the RPM change, right? So we're 300 RPM ahead right here, which means we're to the chip here, right? Right here, we're on the chip. And with the first run, where we made no fuel changes, we're on the chip out here, right? So that's at 1.4 seconds it takes to get to the chip here. And this is at 1.05. So which one do you think is going to spool faster? Which one do you think is going to be easier to stage, right? So the, this test two is going to be easier to stage. So let's look at, uh, let's fast forward a little bit and look at uh, test four, right? So there's test four. Look at that. You can see it when it changed. Look at that huge dramatic increase, right? So now we're up on the chip here, 0.98, right? A lot better. So the faster we can get this thing to the chip, the better we off we are. But the key to this, I'm going to zoom in so I can show you. The key to this is look at how much smoother the fuel line is, right? The, the fuel, the RPM trace is because of fuel. So if I nudge this, there we go. Um, so you can see the... RPM trace is a lot smoother, right? A lot, lot tighter. There's no crazy variations here. But let's look at this. Let's look at, the, again, this base fuel of EE, right? So here we are. 82% was our starting point. Now we're down to 68%. We're a heck of a lot closer. Our estimated VE is 62.8. So, uh, you know, 69 to 62. This thing's, and to be honest with you, it spools pretty fast. There's no CO2 on it. And there's no, there's no, uh, uh, what's it called? Um, no RPM in it, right? This thing really needs a little bit more RPM. But by three seconds, both tune-ups, this, is this isn't a great example because it's a big block, but um, both tune-ups make boost really fast anyway. It didn't really matter. But you can hear this thing going up to the chip right here, right? So you can hear this thing kind of stumbling going to the chip. Um, so but a big block just doesn't really care. But this is more focused on you small block guys. This tune-up here with a small block, this thing would have been total worthless trying to get to the chip, right? This thing would have been popping and carrying on where this right here, this tune up here, this would have went nice and smooth. So let's look at number five, right? 
So let's open up comparison and let's look at number five. Watch that. Oh. Now look at that. Now we're to the chip 0.85. So that means from an idle to get into the to the to the um, to the rev loader, right? 0.85 seconds. So look at that. 0.85 versus 1.4. So that's 0.6 seconds. It doesn't seem like a lot when you're just looking at this graph, right? But um, it's substantial. So if you've got a car that struggles getting to the chip, the first thing you need to do is look at fueling, right? So um, again, here we are, estimated your base fuel VE82 is where we started, 83% basically where we started, 66% is where I'm at, right? So if we do this, here we go. Look at that. So uh, my base fuel VE is 66, and I've since trimmed out a little, touch a little more fuel through here. Uh, but what you can do is now see a trend, and you can see how this is trending. Uh, if you go to my classes, you'll understand this, right? And why we kind of bullseye this, right? Um, to get us close. But uh, this is the easiest way to get these things to spool faster. So most people are just like, well, I put timing in it here and here. This is a big block Chevrolet. This thing's very conservative with timing. It's only got 33 degrees trying to go to the chip. It's nothing for a big block Chevrolet. It's less than what I ran with a small block Ford with a canted valve motor. Um, it's less than I run on a bunch of customers' stuff so with small block Fords and LSs. Or now well, it's about the same as what we run on LSs uh, trying to get to the chip. But timing is not always the answer. That's the whole focus of this uh, video, right? Timing isn't always the answer. If your fuel tune-up sucks. Right? It doesn't matter how much timing manipulation you, you do. Um, uh, it, you know, if your fueling is absolutely a terrible, right? So just for reference, we're 300 and, uh, or I'm sorry, 480 RPM ahead right here. 480 RPM. That's very, very substantial. So the meaner you can make this thing with fuel, the better, right? So look at that fuel flow difference, right? We had more fuel flow here. This is the top line is our is our first test, right? 380 pounds at 3,300 RPM than we do with the same boost pressure, right? 0.7, right? Uh, we have less fuel, or I mean, it's three pounds away, but it's 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 still less fuel with 480 RPM higher. So we were just overfueled, which is okay. I, I always like to start off rich because we'll be safe. These are these are methanol numbers also, so. Um, so could this use a little bit more work? Absolutely. You know, for sure this could use a little bit more work, right? If we look like right here, um, my target was 4.3 and where actual was 4.1 air fuel. It could absolutely use a little bit more work. But uh, I did this pretty quick and dirty. This was about, you know, 30-ish minutes of time between, and, and uh, you know, just a couple of stab, quick stabs at the, uh, at the uh, trans break. So in all reality, you don't need to sit on the limiter and, let it pop and bang when you're, when you're doing this, right? You could use this, uh, you could do this and just let off once it hits the limiter. You know, once you hear it popping and banging and hitting the limiter, just get out of it. Uh, it'll keep your transmission a lot cooler. So, but for the scenarios in last night, this is what I did. It worked out pretty well. So anyway, um, this is a good way to view and, uh, figure out how far off you are, right? Is looking at your base fuel VE versus estimated VE. If you tune in pounds per hour, you can look at base fuel pounds per hour, um, and then uh, and then your your actual fuel flow. If you're going to rely upon closed loop to do the job for you, um, but me, I personally like to just kind of. I don't listen to this. This estimated VE. This isn't like the gospel, like I showed you guys earlier. You know, 116 percent, and it's because of tip in. Um, I, I don't. This isn't the gospel to me. You know what I mean? Like this isn't the only thing that we're gonna we're gonna actually pay attention to, but. Um, it is definitely worthwhile to to watch uh, um, and look at because it'll actually help you kind of dial in your fuel map. So um, now we are going, I'm going testing tomorrow uh, with a little 235 tires. And, um, and I'll send this thing down the racetrack uh, without any concern. So um, once we've got it, you know, going to the chip nice and clean, uh, we kind of hold it you know, for throttle down here, like just up against the foot brake uh, a couple times, make sure it's loaded. Um, once I have that kind of dialed in, 
uh, the rest of this kind of all falls into play. Uh, so anyway, that's all I got. So hopefully you taught, you learned something. Um, happy New Year, and uh, hopefully it's a great one. See you.